God is always looking to have a sweet, quiet, and peaceful fellowship with men. Uh, to have that beautiful and sweet fellowship. So to, for us to have that beautiful and sweet fellowship with God, we must reference God and respect God, which means we must fear God. So the fear that I'm talking, reference and respect God as God, we must know him. A good example is Abraham. Abraham was called a friend of God, but Abraham feared God. He respected God. He reverenced God. Hallelujah. So let's go into the Bible and see the Bible now. Let's go to the book of Proverbs. The book of Proverbs chapter 1 from verse 7. Proverbs 1 from verse 7. Hallelujah. Blessed be God forevermore. Blessed be our Lord Jesus Christ forever and evermore. Amen. Uh, I'll take it from verse 7. I'll read quickly. The fear of God is the beginning of knowledge. But fools despise wisdom and instruction. The fear of the Lord is the beginning of knowledge. But fools despise wisdom and instruction. My son, hear the instruction of thy father and forsake not the law of thy mother. For they shall be an ornament of grace unto thy head and chains about thy neck. My son, if sinners entice thee, consent thou not. If they say, come with us, let us lay wait for blood. Let us love privily for the innocent without cause. Let us swallow them up alive as the grave and whole as those that go down into the pit. We shall find all precious substance. We shall fill our houses with spoil. Cast in thy lot among us. Let us all have one pause. My son, walk not thou in the way with them. Refrain thy foot from, thy, from their path, for their feet run to evil and make haste to shed blood. You see, is that not what we see today in this planet? Earth? Blood all over the places, all over nations. Secret blood, open blood. People they kill openly. People they kill secretly. Poison, shooting, whatever. Because they have no fear of God. Because when you love God, you fear God. And it's the beginning of knowledge. God will fill you with knowledge and wisdom. And that's why I say without relationship with God, you cannot fear God. You have to know that God. You cannot fear a God that you don't know. You can't. Hallelujah. Proverbs chapter 8 from verse 13 to, to 22. The fear of the Lord is to hate evil. You see what I say to you? The fear of the Lord is to hate evil, pride, arrogancy, and the evil way and the forward mouth do I hate. Counsel is mine and sound wisdom. I am understanding. I have strength. By me, kings reign and princes decree justice. By me, princes rule and nobles, even all the judges of the earth. I love them that love me. And those that seek me early shall find me. You hear what God say? You say, I love them that love me. You see, when people say, oh, God love everyone, you know, uh, 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 the Bible says, For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whosoever believeth in him, him should not perish but have everlasting. That is the love of salvation. One time I spoke about levels of love. That's the general love of salvation. For people who want to come to be saved, God will save them. But there's a special love that you and God in your relationship. What God will do for you, those who have special love with God, those ones who have not come to Christ, who refuse to come, they cannot be in this time. So that's all. You see, I have, I love them that love me. And those that seek me early shall find me. You see, that's another level of love. Greater, higher level. But that, for God so love, yes, Jesus died for the sin of every man. So if you repent and come to Jesus, he will accept you. But this is another level of love. I love them that love me. And those that seek me early shall find me. But see, Jesus, the Lord said, I, I hate the wicked. Let me even go to that place where so you will know. You'll see what I'm talking about. So just because, oh, for God so loved the world that he gave all his only begotten son. It's a general thing for all, anyone who want to come to Christ. It's an open invitation. You can be saved. And that's how we were saved also. So here what, if you go to the book of Psalm chapter 5. 
from verse 4. God said, For thou art not a God that hath pleasure in wickedness, neither shall evil dwell with thee. The foolish shall not stand in thy sight. Thou hatest all worker of iniquity. God hates all workers of iniquity. Yeah? Thou hatest all workers of iniquity. So people have to understand the, those differences. Just because you are not saved and then you walk in evil, you're killing people, God is happy and clapping for you and is happy. <laughs> that's not, that's not true. That's not. God have nothing to do with sin. He hates sin. I love them that love me and those that seek me early shall find me. Riches and honor are with me. Yea, durable riches and righteousness. And my fruit is better than gold, yea, than the gold. And my revenue than choice gold. I lead in the way of righteousness, in the midst of the paths of judgment. That I may cause those that love me, yeah? I may cause those that love me to inherit substance. And I will fill their treasures. The Lord, Lord possesses me in the beginning of his way. Before his words of works of hope. You see what I told you that the benefit of loving and fearing God is blessings. I told you, God, there's riches and honor for those who love God. And this rich is not only just financially, also spiritually, you know, durable riches and righteousness also. He said, My I'll give my fruit is better, and my revenue is, is better. And he said, That love me, they will inherit my substance. And I will fill their treasures. That is the power of fearing and loving God. So if we go to the same uh, Proverbs chapter 3, from verse, uh, verse 19 to 21, it said, The Lord by wisdom had founded the earth, by understanding had established the heavens. By his knowledge, the depths are broken up, and the clouds drop down the dew. The clouds drop down the dew. My son, let not them depart from thy eyes. Keep sound wisdom and discretion. You see? He's telling us that we should keep the wisdom of God and the knowledge of God. Uh, and that is the fear of God. The fear of God is the beginning of wisdom. The fear of God is the beginning of knowledge. You see? Even if we go to verse 18, the same chapter 3 of Proverbs, she is a tree of life. To them that lay hold upon her. And happy is everyone that retaineth her. That retaineth wisdom, knowledge, which is the fear of God. Hallelujah. So if we go to the book of Psalm chapter 1. Psalm chapter 1. I read quickly. Okay. Psalm chapter 1 from verse 1 to 3. Blessed is the man that walketh not in the counsel of the ungodly, nor standeth in the way of sinners, nor seated in the seat of the scornful. But his delight is in the law of the Lord, and in his law doth he meditate day and night. And he shall be like a tree planted by the rivers of water, that bringeth forth his fruit in his season. His leaf also shall not wither, and whatsoever he doeth shall prosper. You see? Just like the, the book of Matthew say Matthew 6 and 3. It says, Seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all those things shall be added unto you. So the fear of God, to fear God, to eschew evil, to run away from people. People, that's why sometimes when you come to Christ, you see you lose so many friends. A lot of friends don't want to talk to you. And you'll be wondering. Those are the same friends you keep company, walking in sin, doing all kind of sinful way of life. But when, when you come to Christ, you see suddenly something just separates you, people. Sometimes it's God who separates you so that you can focus on God, so that they don't pull you back, pull you back to, to sin. You remember when the children of Israel, when God brought them into the wilderness, he wanted to teach them his way. You see how where Moses is so smart. Moses asked God, he said, I want to know your way. You see, Moses knew the ways of God. But the children of God did not know the way, uh, the children of Israel, they did not know the ways of God. What they know about God is miracle, miracle, miracle for them. Miracle, he fed them food, miracle. God is beyond food and miracle. 
We all have needs of God, but we have to know the heart of God. You see, Moses was a smart guy. He knew the heart of God. But the children of Israel, they knew the hand of God. Or they won't answer my prayer. Answer my prayer. Do miracle here. Heal me here. But they don't want to know the heart of God. May we not just, may we want the heart of God. When you have the heart of God, you have the hand of God. That's why Moses is more smarter. Anyone that have the heart of God, you not only have his heart, you have his hand. But a lot of people, even the Christian people, they just want the heart of God. Give me this, give me that, give me that, give miracle, heal me, give this job, money, all this thing. But the heart, they don't want. But the people that have the heart of God, they'll have not just the heart of God, but the hand of God. Double portion. But there are people, that's why Moses said, God, I want to know you. Show me your ways. Let God show us his way. Show us your way. When we know your way, we have your heart, we have your hand. But majority, only the hand of God they are interested. They're not interested in the heart of God. They don't want to, they are not interested. Just what God can do for them. But God is beyond that. If you want to be great and move deeper with God, you have to go beyond the hand of God. It's true. All of us have needs from God. I have prayers that I have. Some have been answered. Some I'm waiting. We have, all of us are God does miracles in our lives. He open doors. He do so many great things. But we don't want to just know God for miracle and for feeding. And for, we want to know his heart. We want to know the ways of God. Because those that know the ways of God, that's what is going to take you to heaven. Not just miracle. That's why Jesus said that manna, the manna that you ate is not from heaven, even though it fell from the sky. He said the real manna, your fathers, your great-grandparents, they ate the manna and they all died in their sin. But he said this, I am the bread of life. The bread of life. Take me, eat me, and live forevermore. He said, drink my, eat my body, drink my blood. Some people didn't understand him. They walk away. They thought he's talking like to eat him as a human. <laughs> the God is saying, he's telling them to be cannibal. No, Jesus is not saying that directly. He's talking about spirit, the word of God. He said, the word that I speak is spirit and life. He said, the word, my word is spirit and life. I am the resurrection and life. So we have to go beyond manna. We have to go beyond manna, like the children of Israel. We have to be like Moses. We want to know the ways of God, the heart of God. If you have the heart of God, you have also his hand. But don't have the hand, but you don't have the heart. And that's the case of so many today. May that not be our portion. Help us, uh, may we strike for the heart of God. In that process also the hand. And God already give us his hand. He answer our prayer is doing something. So they only know God for miracle and for feeding. But they don't know his heart. They don't know his way. And that's why they say we want to go back to Egypt. We are better off in Egypt. We are better off in Egypt. You see? God want to teach them how to know God. How to reverence God. How to love God. How to, to respect God. God want to teach them his fear. He said to Moses to teach these people my fear. Teach them the fears of God. Teach them my laws, my statutes, and my, command, my commandments. That may be well with them. That they may prosper. That they may prolong their life. And they may live long. You know? So may we know the hearts of God. May we know the ways of God. Amen. So now if we go to the book of uh, Job chapter 1. Job chapter 1 verse 1 to 3. There was a man in the land of Oz whose name was Job. And that man was perfect and upright. And one that feared God and escorted evil. You see? The fear of God. He respect God. That, uh, and one that feared God and escorted evil. He hate evil. And I tell you, one time I was telling you about holy people, why they call people holy. Not because they cannot sin. No, they can sin. But they choose not to sin. The nature of sin is in them. But they choose not to sin because they love God, they fear God. Not that they cannot sin. They can sin if they want to sin. That's the nature of men. But they are holy because they choose not to sin. And then when they make mistake, boom, boom, they, they go quickly go repent before God. It doesn't matter whether they're in their car, they're on the street, they're on the bus, on the train, at home. Boom! They quickly, because they want to keep that relationship with God. That's how people who fear God. And Holy Spirit is there. He tells us, He brings conviction to our heart that this is right, this is not right. So Job, 
And that man was perfect. Yeah, perfect and upright, righteous. And one that feared God and eschewed evil. You see? So even I don't want to talk about his uh, substance, but I'll go. And there were born unto him seven sons and, there, and three daughters. His substance also was 7,000 sheep, 7,000 sheep and 3,000 camels and 500 yoke of oxen and 500 she asses and a very great household. So that this man was the greatest of all the men of the East. How God bless him also, spiritually. Spiritually and even in finances. So if we go to verse 8, And the Lord said unto Satan, As thou consider my servant Job, that there is none like him in the earth. Perfect and an upright man. I pray that God can speak like that about us. I pray to God Almighty that God can speak like that. If he's not, not already speaking about us like this, that he can speak about, about us like this. A perfect and an upright man. One that feared God and eschewed evil. And you see what? In verse 10. This is, this is what Satan said. As thou not made an edge round about him. You see the one of the blessing edge. When God put an edge round, round you. Not even Satan. Nothing can come against you. And that's why I was saying that it's not us, ourselves, that can fight Satan. It's Jesus in us that have that give us the power to fight. And that's why he said, Satan is telling God that you put an edge. You put a protection. That is part of the benefit. When you fear God. God will put a protection around you. He said, Thou hast thou not made an edge about him and about his house and his household also, not just him, his family, and, and about all that he had on every side. Thou hast blessed the work of his hands and his substance increased in the land. You see, Satan said, You put a protection against him. You bless the work of his hands. You bless his house. You protect his family. You see? And that's what God does for those who fear him. So if we go to the book, uh, 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 Okay. You know, so, but the Lord told Satan that that's not all, that, that, that that's not just about blessing. This guy is not about my hand. He told Satan, it's not about my hand. Save if you take all those things. Job will still love me. So if you go, if you go to the book of uh, 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 the same Job chapter 1, eh? if you see the Bible say, in all the trouble that Job went through, in all this, Job sin not, not charge God foolishly. Because the love that, Jesus, that Job has for God is not for the things that come from his hand. But he loved God with all his heart. Hallelujah. Hello, can you put your phone on mute? Can, can somebody put their phone on mute? Hello? Can somebody put their phone on mute? The noise from your background is interfering. Can you put your... Thank you very much, my brother or my sister. God bless you. So now, if we go to the book of uh, Genesis chapter 6. Genesis chapter 6. Verse 5. And God saw that the wickedness of man was great in the earth, and that every imagination of his thought of his heart was only evil continually. Only evil continually. And then in verse 9, God said, This are uh, in verse uh, okay, 5 to okay. And God saw that the wickedness of man was great in the earth. 6 5, Genesis 6, 6 5. And that every imagination of the thoughts of his heart was only evil continually. And he repented the Lord that he had made man on the earth. And he grieved him at his heart. And the Lord said, I will destroy man whom I have created from the face of the earth. Both man and beast and the creeping thing and the fowls of the earth, of the air. For it repented me that I have made them. But Noah found grace in the eyes of the Lord. These are the generations of Noah. Noah was a just man and a perfect in his generation. And Noah walked with God. You see, just like Job, uh, you know, those are exa another example of those who love God, who fear God. So because of that, he finds grace in the presence of God because he loved God and he, he feared God. Hallelujah. 
If we go to the same Genesis chapter, Genesis, if we go to 19, verse, uh, Genesis 19, I'll take it from verse uh, 14 to, to 19. Hallelujah. And Lot went out and spake unto his sons in law, which married his daughters, and said, Up, get you out of this place, for the Lord will destroy this city. But it seemed, it seemed as one that mocked unto his sons in law. They were mocking him when he said, Let us get out of, of Sodom and Gomorrah before the fire come and destroy that city. So, and when the morning arose, then the angels hastened Lot, saying, Arise, take thy wife and thy two daughters, which are, are here, lest thou be consumed in the iniquity of the city. And while he lingered, the men laid hold upon his son and upon the hand of his wife and upon the hand of his two daughters. And the, and the Lord being merciful unto him, and they brought him forth and set him out without the city. You see? And it came to pass when they had brought them forth abroad that he had escaped for their life. Lot, look not behind thee, neither stay thou in all the plain. Escape to the mountain, lest thou be consumed. You see now? God always have mercy for those that fear him. So that's all, uh, all kind of thing that God does for them. I show you Noah, he received grace. He was not consumed in the water. When God wanted to destroy Sodom and Gomorrah, because Lot was the man of God, just like his, 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 his uncle, Abraham, God saved him. God always delivers us. It doesn't matter if we were in the hand of evil men, he would deliver us. It doesn't matter if it's the hand of Satan or demons, he would deliver. So that's what God does for those that fear him. So that's what I was telling you. It's not just limited to finances. It's a big thing that God does. Favor, love, deliverance for those that fear him. So now if we go to the book of uh, Genesis chapter 3 from 8 to 10, I read quickly. Okay. And they heard the voice of the Lord God walking in the garden in the, in the cool of the day. And Adam and his wife hid themselves from the presence of the Lord God among the trees of the garden. And the Lord called unto Adam and said unto him, Where art thou? And he said, I heard thy voice in the garden, and I was afraid because I was naked, and I hid myself. You see, sin always causes people to be ashamed. Always causes them to run away from the presence of God. And always have, cause them to, to have, be naked. Not just physical naked in the natural. Spiritually naked. That's why he doesn't want to have fellowship with God. Even the spiritually because he has sinned against God. Because the, the kind of fellowship God has with Adam and Eve when he came in the cool of day was a spiritual fellowship. They were drawn to God. They were like spirit beings with no sin, no contamination. God used to come down. So because sin always makes people to run away from God. Sin always causes people to have guilt. Sin always causes people to have shame. And sin always causes people to have nakedness. And that is why Jesus came and took away those shame, took away those guilt, took away those uh, 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 nakedness, that we may be restored back to God. That is the word that I was looking for. God always wants to restore people back to him. <laughs> In the beginning when I was talking, that's the, you know, restore us. God's sin is always to restore people back to him, to bring them out of sin and restore them back to fellowship. And that's why God sent Jesus to come and do that. So now if we go to the book of John chapter 19, uh, John chapter 19 uh, from verse... Uh, John, John chapter 3, sorry, my brother and sister. John 3 from chapter 19. 19 to... Oh, chapter 8. Okay, John 3 from chapter 8. Okay. The wind blow it. The wind blow it where it listed, and thou hearest the sound thereof, but cannot tell whence cometh. And whither it goeth, so is everyone that is born of the Spirit. Nicodemus answered and said unto him, How can these things be? Jesus answered and said unto him, Are thou a master of Israel? And knowest not these things? Verily, verily, I say unto thee, We speak that we do know, and testify that we have sinned, 
and we receive not our witness. If I have told you earthly things, and ye believe me not, how shall ye believe if I tell you of the heavenly thing? You see, and Jesus said, And lo, and lo, man hath, and no man hath ascended up to heaven, but he that came down from heaven, even the Son of Man, which is in heaven. And as Moses lifted up the serpents in the wilderness, even so must the Son of Man be lifted up. You see? So now, if you go to 19 to 21, again, it said, This is the condemnation that light is come into the world. And men love darkness rather than light, because their deeds were evil. For everyone that doeth evil hated the light, that are cometh to the light, lest his deeds should be reproved. But he that doeth truth cometh to the light, that his deeds may be made manifest, that they are out of God. You see? So that's why they run from God, because their deeds are evil, and they don't want to come to the light. So now, my brother, I say, if you go to the book of Luke, <clears throat> Luke, um, the beloved Luke, the physician, Luke chapter 5, 6. Okay. There was in the days of Herod, the king of Judea, a certain priest named Zechariah. That is the father of John the Baptist. Zechariah of the course of Abia. And his wife was of daughter of Aaron. And her name was Elizabeth. And they were both righteous before God, walking in all the commandments and ordinances of the Lord, blameless. You see, these are those another example of that a people that fear God. You hear what the Bible says about them? They always walk, both of them, husband and wife. Both husband, not just husband, who is a priest. His wife too was a woman of God. And you see, you see, they were both righteous before God, walking in all the commandments and ordinances of the Lord, blameless. Those are those that fear God. Another example. If we go to the book of Romans, chapter 8, 15 to 16. Hallelujah. Blessed be God forever and evermore. And blessed be our Lord Jesus Christ forever and evermore. Amen. Romans chapter 8, 15 to 16. I read quickly because of time. Um, okay. For ye have not received the spirit of bondage again to fear, but ye have received the spirit of adoption. We are by ye cry, Habba, Father. The Spirit is said, bear a witness with our spirit that we are the children of God. You see now, before we were born again, we are in bondage of sin. We are in bondage of Satan. Every time we have this fear, you see? And that's the fear of the world and the fear of Satan that I was telling you. That Jesus himself, you know, you hear what he said? Ye have not received the spirit of bondage. Again, to fear. Because Satan always keep people in fear. And that's how Satan can control your mind. By fear, fear. And what does what does the leaders of this world do? They they scare other nations by fear. The poor ones, the one they can control, the ones they can bully. But when they see their match, they will not do anything. So now the same thing, human being, all those bosses, directors, all those people, wicked people, they control the mind of people by fear. I will write you up. We'll fire you. We'll report you. we call the, the, the commissioner. we call this person. we call, you know. So that's how to subject people. That's the fear of Satan and of people, not of God. Because I want you to know the difference. That's why I came to show. When we came to Christ, Jesus break that fear. Set us free from that bondage. That we may be able to fear God and serve God. Reference and respect God. Hallelujah. Thessalonians. The book of Second Thess Thessalonians, chapter one, Hallelujah. Second Thessalonians, chapter chapter one. Let me see. Okay, verse seven to ten. Let me read quickly. And to you who are troubled, rest with us. When the Lord Jesus shall reveal from heaven, shall be revealed from heaven with his mighty angels. In flaming fire, taking vengeance on them that know not God, 
You see, that's what is going to happen to all these wicked people who, who have no fear of God. God will come. Jesus will appear with his holy angels, with his uh, saints, and with the flaming fire. He will take vengeance on them that know not God. That's why I told you, you cannot fear God if you don't know God. You cannot fear a person you don't know. You don't know God, you cannot fear him or love him. You see? How come the husband know their wife? Wife knows husband because they spend time together. So that's how you know each other. So you cannot love God that you, you don't know. You cannot fear a God that you don't know. You see? On them that know not God and that obey not the gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ, who shall be punished with everlasting destruction upon a, 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 from the presence of the Lord and from the glory of his power, when he shall come to be glorified in his saints and to be admired in all them that believe, because our testimony among you was believed in that day. You see? Hallelujah. So now if we go to Job, Okay, let me do, uh, okay, before Job, I have one Psalm. Psalm chapter 90. Psalm 90, before we come to it. Psalm chapter 90. The book of Psalm 90. 90 verse 5. Hallelujah. Psalm chapter 90. 90. Okay. Okay, 90 verse 5. The Bible says, thou, thou carriest them away as with a flood. They are as a sleep. They are as a sleep in the morning. They are like grass which groweth up. You see, those who don't have the fear of God, who don't reference God, that's what is going to happen to them at the end. 91. The next verse there from verse 9, I read quickly. Hallelujah. Because thou hast made the Lord, which is my refuge, even the Most High, thy habitation, there shall no evil before thee, neither shall any plague come nigh thy dwelling. For he shall give his angels charge over thee, to keep thee in all thy ways. They shall bear thee up in their hands, lest thou dash thy foot against a stone. Thou shalt tread upon the lion and adder, the young lion and the dragon, Shall thou trample under thy feet, under feet, because he has set his love upon thee, up, upon me, because he has set his love upon me. Therefore will I deliver him. God is saying, those that have set their love and fear him, that that's why he will do all this thing for them. I will set them, I will set him on high, because he has known my name. He shall call upon me, and I will answer him. You say when I was saying that a leader. We living in his presidential mansion or a billionaire or those people, they will pray. God don't even hear their prayer. Their prayer don't even go above the ceiling of their house because their heart is evil. Their fruits are evil. But you, as a Christian, simple Christian person, you call upon the name of God, he will answer. And that's part of all these benefits of fearing God, you know. He shall call upon me and I will answer him. I will be with him in trouble. In times of trouble, God will be with you. I will deliver him and honor him with long life. With long life will I satisfy him and show him my salvation. You see, I told you beyond finances, these are all the benefits of those that fear God and love God. Hallelujah. If we go to the book of Job chapter 4, uh, as we soon come to a close, after Job, then one more Deuteronomy, and then we come to a close. Hallelujah. Uh, Job chapter 4, 17, 21. Let me read it quickly. Hallelujah. Shall mortal man be more just than God? Shall a man be more pure than his, mat, his, his maker? No. Behold, he put no trust in his servants and his angels. He charged with folly, with foolishness. How much less in them that dwell in houses of clay? That is our body. Whose foundation is in the dust. We are made from dust. I said when a man dies, the spirit goes back to God. The soul depends on if he's a righteous man, the soul goes to the outer court back. If he's a wicked evil man who died in their sin, he goes to hell. And the body goes back to the soil and decay. Because man is made of 
spirit, soul, and body. So that body is the clay that he's talking about, that is made from the dust. When God made Adam, Adam and he breathed into him and he became a living being. So now, whose foundation is in the dust, which are crushed before the moth, they are destroyed from morning to evening. They perish forever without any regarding it. Doth not their excellency, which is in them, go away. They die even without wisdom. You see? Those that die without wisdom. All their pride, I'm a star, I got this best award, this award, Nobel Prize, this, this, that, that. And it's useless where you end up in hellfire, in hell, before the final lake of fire. It's useless. You're a billionaire, you this, you have all this money, you are the big proud this. And you die, you go to hell. What does that profit you? Nothing. It doesn't profit you anything. It's a waste. It's rather you live a simple life and make it to heaven. Or be blessed by God, be a billionaire from God and make it to heaven. Like Solomon, David, Job, Abraham, they all made it to heaven. They were blessed by God. But that blessings, they did not serve the blessing. They worship the blesser, not the blessing. A lot of people worship blessings, but the smart people worship the blesser. It is the blesser you're supposed to worship, not the blessing. Hallelujah. If we go to the book of Deuteronomy, chapter 32. Hallelujah. That's the last uh, verse, uh, chapter 32, verse 39. Chapter 32, verse 39. See now, I even I, I am he, and there is no God with me. I kill and I make a life. I wound and I heal. Neither is there any that can deliver out of my hand. I lift up my hand to heaven and I say I live forevermore. That is Jehovah God. God the Father, Christ the Son, and the Holy Spirit declaring that. Hallelujah. We must fear God. It's better to fear God than to fear men. Jesus said, why are you fearing a man? A man can take away, destroy your body, but cannot destroy your soul. But fear one that can destroy both your body and your soul in hell. You see? How many people, wicked people have killed or done evil to? They still made it to heaven. Because they fear God and loved God. Because God may allow something sometimes for some reason. But they went to heaven. Hallelujah. Father, we just thank you for tonight, O oh God. Help us, O oh God, to fear you all the days of our life, O oh God. For we know that the fear of God is the beginning of wisdom, O oh God. We pray, Lord, Father God, that we will serve you, we will worship you, we serve you.